Last episode, we went through which ECU we were going to be using on this car. We ended up with a Nexus R3 from Haltech. This episode, I'm going to show you how I go about taking their unterminated harness from the ECU all the way to the engine, and how I personally wire the stuff up. All right, full disclosure, before you watch this video and decide you want to follow in my footsteps, I am a hobbyist when it comes to wiring. I am not a professional by any means. I have found a, a system that works for me that has been successful in the past. However, if you are looking for a professional quality set of instructions, well, you wouldn't be watching. I don't think you'd be watching Clapped Out if that's what you're after. Then never mind. I don't even know why I did a public service announcement. That's dumb. Yeah, this is the only way to wire a car. And don't let anyone on any other more established and more intelligent channels tell you differently. It's 5 a.m., let's roll. So you can see there's wiring pulled out of the firewall here. I still need to make a block off panel to fit this grommet through. But this, what you see here is Haltech's unterminated harness. It's just been zip tied up and, and messed around with so far. Some things have been cut, but I'll explain all that in time. That being said, it feeds through the firewall. If you watched the last video, you can see that I mounted the ECU down here and all this, uh, excuse me, oh, this frappuccino is all over my guts. Okay, anyway, whew. So ECU is mounted. This is all factory wiring. Oh God, factory wiring stuff over here. However, uh, I mount the ECU first and then I run the unterminated harness through the firewall. So I know that I have enough real estate to reach the ECU and the run from the ECU to the firewall is really important from a service standpoint because having to like crawl around and dig for connectors and stuff is a pain. So first thing I do is I mount the ECU where it's gonna live forever. And I did that with an ECU master ECU mount. And again, now the wiring is ran out here. So let's start with the most basic step and that is planning what you're wiring. Now you're gonna see a couple, that's a multiple spreadsheets here, but the important thing is the spreadsheet that I make this, I just use uh, Excel to make this, and I just do a pinout. Uh, it's just a, a table of pinouts. So connector A on the ECU and the positions A1 down to A33, and then A34 is on the next page, and then connector C, which is weird they go from A to C, but they do. C1 uh, all the way down to C34. You can see that, let me get that in focus. And then the last page are my high current outputs and some notes, some, some areas for notes. Now, you see the paper. Let me show you in physical form what this means. Okay, so connector A and connector C. And then right back here, do you see that big plug? That is the four, it's uh, their four high current outputs, 25 amp outputs. That nipple right there is your map sensor. And then obviously your power and your ground are right here. You have a Wi-Fi antenna right here, I still have to hook it up. And then this plug down here is the a data port. But connector A, connector C, I hope that's connector A. You know how we check? That first wire you see is blue. Okay, so I, I need to make sure that's connector A. Let me go double check. That's connector A by looking at my spreadsheet. And I see connector A, injector one, if it'll focus. The color of that is L, which in Haltech lingo means blue. So I know that that is connector A because they are keyed and they can only go into their respective slots. So that is what this table translates to. This is just a pinout and where those wires are assigned, which is kind of neat. Now what I do is I roll through all this. The function of each pin is right here. So injectors, we have a digitally pulsed output, battery ground, digitally pulsed output, half bridge output, that means it can go positive or uh, to ground can high, can low. Anyway, you get the gist, right? All of these are just the functions of those individual wires. Also, Haltech's website has these pinouts, these, these pictorial graphs that show you what pin goes where and what they do with examples of like a DPO, what you could use a DPO for, an HBO, so on and so forth. So this is super helpful. I just put mine into an Excel spreadsheet because it's way easier for me to organize my thoughts in that respect. So once I have my spreadsheet typed up, I start going through and I decide, well, what do I want to add to this harness? So for this car specifically, I don't need a ton of fancy stuff like it's going to be a dedicated drag car. For example, I don't need front shock sensors or rear shock sensors. I don't need a laser ride height level sensor. I don't need EGTs. I shouldn't say don't need. I just, for this, for the purposes of this build, it's not, 
it's not necessary, which I don't know the difference between that and need. But again, it's just a streetcar. A lot of that data I'm not going to be reviewing. So I was able to basically neuter the harness compared to a full race car. So what do we have on this? We have the basics. You have your coils to wire. You have your injectors to wire. TPS to wire. If you had an idle air control valve, you would wire that. I do not. Uh, oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel pressure, all of the basics. That's what this car is going to have. And then the harness is going to have a ton of expandability later if somebody wants to church it up because you all know I will sell this car. I will not keep it. But this loom itself is just all spare inputs, outputs, five volts, uh, half bridge outputs, knock sensors, all that stuff. So the harness itself laid out Next step for me is to go to the spreadsheet and write down exactly what I want to use each of these inputs and outputs for. For example, half bridge output one, I'm going to use for my alternator to excite the alternator. Again, you're going to have people in the comments who are like, don't do that, it's a waste. I got 40 of them, I'm not using them, it's fine. Now I go to the next page. This is where a lot of my inputs and outputs are on connector C. I um, should say inputs, more inputs than outputs. I don't think there's actually any outputs on connector C. But the basics, again, let me see if I get this to focus. You got TPS, intake air temp. You have fuel pressure, uh, water, pre water temp, water pressure, oil pressure, oil temp, clutch position switch, flex fuel sensor up at the top there, drive shaft speed sensor, front wheel speed sensor, cam sensor, crank sensor. Again, basics, all basics. Nothing over the top, nothing crazy. This harness also comes pre-terminated with a wideband extension, which makes life easy. So the wideband extension's right down here. Just plug the wideband into there and into your O2 sensor and you're done. So, second step for me again, table out what I want. That's number two for me. All right, let's review. Step one, mount the ECU. Step two, create a table of all the inputs and outputs that you're gonna use. One step that I can't show you because I've already done it is before I feed the wiring through the firewall, I actually draw all the wires out for each sensor and I tape the ends of them with what they are respectively. So like this is water temp, this is boost control, this is the crank uh, sensor, this is gonna be alternator. Again, those are all spare. And on the back side over here, I've already run the wires. You can see an eclectic group of labels, everything from drive shaft speed to crank, uh, crank, crank case pressure, if I can speak, front wheel speed, oil pressure, so on and so forth. But again, um, that's just it's a, sh a step that I didn't show. And when I do that, I use this connecting rod vise and I clamp the connectors for the ECU in it and I run the harness all the way out this long table. And then one at a time, I separate the wires and I tape the ends of them and I tape them again with whatever their functionality is supposed to be. Once that is done, once I complete that and I route that wiring through the firewall, that's when I decide to break off each section of wiring into branches. I personally do three branches. I do passenger side, I do center of car, and I do driver side. And then each one of those three branches, if I have to split off from it, I can. So for example, the first branch on the passenger side, it breaks off right here, but you'll also see I have spare wires down here and then spare wires up here. These three are all the first to break off. You have your crank sensor, boost control, and water temp and pressure and alternator. And the reason this branch is here is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, water temp and pressure is right here. My crankcase pressure, is that loose? I should probably tighten that, huh? Crankcase, uh, I'm sorry, not crankcase pressure. Crankshaft signal is down there. My alternator is right here. And uh, what else did I have? Boost control. I'll be mounting my boost control solenoid down here. So that branch is broken off right there. Then I'll take these wires to each of their respective homes and I'll snip them where it makes sense. So I know that that is where I need to pin that connector as far as overall. And I'll get more into that in a second. Backside here, I just showed you these two other looms, not looms, but spare wires. These are my coils. The coil packs have a dedicated sub harness. That connector is right here. So my coils, when I finish cutting them back, will just plug straight into here with a male Deutsch connector. Fuel injectors, same deal. See those blue wires by the firewall? Those blue wires will terminate and plug into this fuel injector sub-harness that I already made. So that's the center section. So I went over passenger section, how I'm doing it, the center of the motor, what it needs. Now, driver's side, 
This big fat group of wires contains just an absolute gang. Again, showed you all these, all these labels. The last thing I'll do is this side because it's gonna be the most complex and there are gonna be sub branches that break off. For example, if you look at the bottom there, you see my crankcase pressure and my oil temp sensor are together. So what I'll do is I'll run those two leads together and only split them off right at the bottom of the oil pan so they stay all loomed together. I have fuel pressure right here, but I also have oil uh, pressure right over here. So I'll run those together and split them off and go to their respective places. But I have to get the bulk of the lead to this side of the engine while avoiding everything that's gonna, that could affect it. Heat, vibration, whatever. Just try to keep this, all the wiring away from any interference, um, away from bell housing. I mean, anything to make servicing it as easy as possible is the goal. Um, like TPS, again, that's an outlier. So. I mean, everyone's going to do something, do it differently. I'll probably run TPS with the cam sensor, come under the intake and plug in over here so there's no ugly wire running around the outside of the engine bay. But that's how I do it. I break it into three sections. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. I'm not the end-all be-all, but that is how I set up my harnesses. And again, it's been, it's been fairly convenient and straightforward thus far. So I'm not changing for anybody unless someone has like a, a way better way to do it. Then maybe I'll change. All right, pop quiz, let's go over the steps. One, mount the ECU. Two, plan your inputs and your outputs. Three, label your wires. Get them labeled up. Step four, feed the harness into the bay. And then finally, step five, you're gonna go ahead and organize your branches. And we ain't talking trees, buddy. Again, there's, there's probably better and more efficient ways to do this. But at this step, this is like, the most time consuming stuff is done. By the time I am done making my branches, that is the most time, like just the processes I showed today, that takes me six to eight hours minimum. Like it is a very long drawn out process because there's a lot of foresight and foreskin and planning that you gotta do. And if you don't do the foreskin planning, you're gonna have a rough bar mitzvah. What is, I don't know what I'm saying. Just, just back on subject, okay, so, the most time consuming stuff is done. At this point, you're gonna take your branches, you're gonna take your sensors, you're gonna create your sub branches if you need them, and you're gonna run them to their respective places, and you're gonna cut the ends, and then you're gonna loom the harness. As far as looming the harness, there, this is one of those things where there's a billion different opinions. Some people use like Raychem heat shrink for the entire thing, they just heat shrink, sleeve it. I don't use heat shrink on the harness, on the whole harness. Um, yeah, I, if you do it right, it looks awesome. And if you do it nicely and cleanly, it looks great. But since this harness, you can see wires coming in and out and it's kind of lumpy and bumpy. It straightens out right here, but this is just me being honest. In order to hide a lot of that lumpy and bumpiness, I use loom. I use solid uh, sleeving, not solid sleeving, but full loom. I use a company called TechFlex. Um, I love their stuff. It is, it's called Clean Cut. It works awesome. This is some, this is quarter inch out of the bag. It is full sleeve, so there's no, it's not split loom, so it's not gonna break open. And whenever I finish a branch, I slide the stuff over, I heat shriek the ends of it, and I roll on. So TechFlex is what I use for um, actual looming of the harness itself. The other thing I use, is out of the way, I use adhesive lined heat shrink. Um, I think Dell City sells this stuff, Waytech Wire sells it. Uh, race spec online sells it but i use adhesive lined on all the joints because when the glue sets up it makes for a really strong connection so your basic heat shrink i also you go buy your craftsman box and cut the stuff down this is how i do it um this is just this is actually also adhesive lined, but i didn't label it because i'm an idiot but yeah that's how i have my miniature heat shrink i also have larger spools of heat shrink that i use Tool wise, nothing special. I really don't have any special tools. Tessa tape makes for when you jack a harness up, that makes it look like you didn't. But there's nothing crazy special about any of the tools I use. This is just a standard Deutsch crimper. Uh, you can get these on Amazon, they're not expensive. Um, 12 and 14 gauge pin. All of my pins actually are right here. Everything from 22 gauge to 12 and beyond. Extra connectors. I keep my DTM connectors. These are all butt connectors and ring terminals. I keep two sets of uh, DTM connector, if I can find them. There you go. So DTO, DTM, these are also just called, uh, I think DT, but DTM is gonna be the small stuff, 20 to 22 gauge. This is gonna be, uh, I believe 14 to 16 gauge for the DT, DTO, DTP. I can't remember what these are. 
Someone in the comments is gonna say it. So go to the comments and someone tell me what these, or I can just read the damn. Let's see. Yeah, these are just eight. This is, uh, I can't pronounce that. Amphenanol, fentanyl, ATO, whatever. Um, DTO, DTM, again, nothing crazy special there. Just normal Deutsch connector stuff. And if you don't know how to make a Deutsch connector, uh, if you don't know how to assemble one, they're super simple. YouTube search how to make one. It'll take you five seconds to learn it. And then all the spare wiring, I cut off the harness I save in case I need to repair a harness down the road. So I have all the spare wiring that I have cut off. But that's the extent of, of how I make a universal harness, uh, non-universal, specific to a chassis. It's not pretty, it's not fun, but once it's done, it will be pretty. It still will not be fun. And movie magic. Here is the factory harness that came out of this thing. If you guys recall, one of the first videos, I was tearing the wiring out of this thing because all of the wiring looks like you have a butt connector splice to a butt connector splice to Lord only knows where all this stuff leads. This is the factory harness that came out of it. Everything is so freaking haggard. Like, it's just awful, unusable. I mean, there's, there's no way I would ever trust this. And this is how my harness ended up. Now, nothing's terminated. Like, I don't have connectors on the ends of these, but I made my three branches, um, like I showed you guys in the beginning. Branched her on out, and this is gonna be ready to drop back in the engine bay. The only things I have left to terminate, I have my ignition switch input that I have to just put to a Deutsch connector, and I have my clutch position switch that I have to put to a Deutsch connector. I'm gonna wait till this is back installed in the car so I can get these wires up and out of the way. But my whole goal with making any harness out of their unterminated harness is ease of maintenance and working on it. Like there's gonna be times where I have to pull the harness off. That's just part of it. Or the next owner, when I sell the car, is gonna have to pull the harness off. So label everything so they know exactly where it goes and make sure you have a little extra room on the harness if you have to make any corrections. But it's not that hard. If I can do it, dude, anybody can do it. Anyone can do it. I am not a genius. If you've watched any of these videos, you know I'm not a genius. So if you're ever second guessing yourself or you're thinking, oh, this is so I shouldn't do it, I don't know how, just do it. Just freaking do it. Who cares? Who cares? Spend five minutes reading and then do it. Again, if I can do it, you can do it. That's all I got for today. If you guys have any specific needs or questions uh, that you, uh, you want answers to, drop them in the comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a blessed weekend. That is my outro song. Outro song. This is the end of the video. Why are you still watching? Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off.